Hi there, I'm John Shields, and welcome to another episode of Chesapeake Farm and Bay to Table. Uh, we just keep on cooking here. We can't stop ourselves. So if you've been following us for a while, you know we kind of try to go with a thematic. Uh, we're getting into the fall, and when the, our team sat to, down and we got together, we were thinking, what happens in the fall? Well, it's festival time. And there's every kind of festival you can possibly imagine. You know, you got your apple festivals, the pumpkin festivals, you go on hay rides. But I thought I might just go to one of my favorite festivals that happens every year, and it's the U.S. Oyster Festival. So you get that kind of connection. We got some really good cooking kinds of things uh, to go on with that. So we headed down to St. Mary's County. Um, for the U.S. Oyster Festival, and it was the 56th year. They've been doing this for quite some time, and people from all over the country come. And uh, about 43 years ago, they started a cooking competition. Um, I'm fortunate enough for quite a number of years now to be asked to come down to judge that cooking competition. So we, we rolled the whole thing together to make a wonderful episode for you this evening and some great food, and I'm very excited. Now, I do have something I'm not so excited about, and I'm a little sad. Mary, my executive sous chef, who's also the CEO of Harford County Public Libraries, can't be with us this evening. She's a little under the weather, so I sort of have her right here with me. <laughs> and so we're, we have Mary in spirit. She's going to be cooking in spirit with us this evening. So, Mayor, um, we had the best time. We went down um, a day ahead of the cooking competition, and we went to a friend of mine's place. It's called No Time to Cook, and it's Gwen Novak. And it's on Solomon's Island. It is the coolest cooking school you've ever seen in your life. It's absolutely beautiful. So Mary, do you remember when we were down there? Let's take a look. Thank you. It's so great to be here. <laughs> so good to have you. Well, and welcome back, uh, Don. It's great to see you. <laughs> you great too. To see you you uh, too. And we're back here in no time to cook. Yeah, it's been a couple years. Yes, it has been a couple years, but we're ready to get back to the U.S. Oyster Festival. Yes, indeed. Because we have some judging to do. <laughs> oh, yes, you it's, do. Uh, it's a hard job, but, you know, I think we're up for the task, it's right? It's important work. Yeah, yeah. Important work. And, and thanks so much for having us down My here. My pleasure. Mary and I have been talking about this for a while. We're very excited about it. And, you know, every time I come down here and I'm driving down the street to get here, yeah. I keep looking out at <laughs> the views, the vistas, and Solomon's Island, it is amazing. It is a gorgeous little island. It's it's tiny, as you um, probably almost saw. You drove all the way around it and don't blink kind of thing. <laughs> but it used to be a watermen's community. There's still some of that that happens here. Yeah. Um, but it's kind of become this little vacation spot now. Yeah. Yeah. And every view out of every window here is either of the harbor or the river or the bay. Yeah. So it's not a terrible place to be. Not so bad. No. And, and, and it has a lot of history, you know, within the context of the Chesapeake. It does. So tell, you know, refresh my memory. Tell me a little bit about No Time to Cook. Yeah, so we started No Time to Cook back in 1999 as a personal chef service. So I'd come to your house and we talk about what you like to eat, what you didn't like to eat. I'd design a menu for you, do all the grocery shopping, come to your house and prepare two weeks worth of meals. Wow. And that was awesome until the economy tanked in 08 uh -huh. and nobody had room in their budget for a chef anymore. So I took a little hiatus and um, then a couple of years after that, I started teaching cooking classes out of my house. And then we moved down to this beautiful location, which Whoa. has been in my family for now I'm the fourth generation. And we've been here since 2018. And then the actual, the original place burned down in 2006. And um, yeah, so we sort of, you know, kept this piece and decided we would rebuild this uh, very reminiscent of my grandmother's home. And so I'm the fourth generation in our family to, oh. to have a food business here. We offer recreational cooking classes, so things like hands-on pasta, we have happening downstairs tonight. Yeah. Um, sushi, we have a bourbon tasting tomorrow night. Um, we do culinary tours. I just came back from Kentucky, the Bourbon Trail. Uh, we've been to Normandy. We just do so <laughs> many, anything that's fun and 
and foodie, we'll yeah. do it here. That's awesome. Yeah. So the, the culinary tradition continues. That's the plan. Well, <laughs> and that's what we're going to do all weekend. Yes. Culinary treats. Exactly. Uh, I have an amazing dinner prepared for you guys. Are you hungry? I am. Okay. Always. Okay. We are. Good. All right, let's okay. eat. Let's Come do on. it. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> As you can see from that, we had like the best time. Not only the best time, because it was a beautiful night, standing out on the deck and oh my God, I loved it. The food was incredible. So I don't know what to tell you, except you're gonna have to go down there yourself and go down to Solomon's Island and uh, have a little bit of a vacation. Well, speaking of vacations, I took someone away from her whole life of a vacation on Solomon's Island. <laughs> and she's here with us tonight, um, the owner of No Time to Cook, uh, Chef Gwen Novak. Come on in. It's, hey, honey. Hi, sweetheart. Oh. It's so nice to be in Baltimore. Thank was, you for having me. Absolutely. It was just like yesterday almost. Right? Pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we had the best time. Thank we you really for coming did. down. And thank you so much for uh, having us down there. Anytime. It was, Anytime. It, it was fun, wasn't it? Was it was a great evening. It was, it was a great uh, weekend. Yeah, honestly, the whole weekend right? was at oysters, 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 and oysters. <laughs> we love the oysters. We did. Towards the end, it was getting to be almost a little too much. Oh, yeah. Just a little too yeah. much. So we were having to ba balance it, you know. How do you balance oysters? Saltines? Uh, ham. <laughs> ham. Chicken. Chicken. Yeah. We were trying to Anything. put some things together, you know, to, yeah. to make it all work. Yeah, so, yeah. But since we went to an oyster festival, and since we judged an oyster festival, we figured tonight's episode is going to be about oysters Makes as, sense to as, me. as much as possible right right you know, we will have a little hooch at the end just because <laughs> i know you like it <laughs> they do everybody does I, you know everybody we don't do. but we they, don't, do. But they do. do so it's, we, we're doing it for them so I, okay so the first recipe that we're going to do here is one from it's one from of mine one yeah, of your very yeah. own well believe it or not there was a time when i didn't love oysters yeah. So my husband is a commercial waterman. He would bring them home all the time. And I uh -huh. was like, I have got to come up with a way to prepare these things that I enjoy. So these are all of my favorite things on top of an oyster. So there's bacon, <laughs> there's butter, there's brandy, <laughs> there's thyme and cheese, Parmesan cheese. Well, you can't go wrong with all that. I, I think you're right. Generally, yeah. if you put bacon and cheese on something, it's going to be good. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> yes. All right. So... What do we start with? I so think the oysters. Probably oysters. Right. So we have some beautiful oysters here. Exactly. And here, let's pull these up a little bit so yep. that you can do your magic with those. Um, we got some, we get all kinds of different oysters. Uh, we have chop tank oysters, and then we have, um, which is obviously from the chop tank river. Right. And then we have Bevan's uh, oysters, which are from Virginia. And we usually get kind of a combo uh, for people to try different things because obviously as you go further down it gets saltier it's saltier exactly. and you know some people like like a sweet oyster some prefer mm -hmm. you know the briny or saltier yeah. thing. yeah now can you tell the difference where they're from john just by tasting it by is your taste or your taste buds that attuned to they're not that attuned but they either. what yeah. they can but the, what they can tell i can tell if they're from up the chomp tank versus or, or how far down yeah. they are. So yeah. I can kind of get like a three, I have like a three oyster right. range, you know, <laughs> yeah. not so salty, a little bit salty and damn, that's salty. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to add a little bacon to them. So if, if okay. you get oysters that are a little on the fresher side, yeah. for, it's my, my, my grandma, grandmother used to always say things were fresh yeah. when they didn't have enough salt, which kind of makes sense when you yeah. think about it. She came from a waterman family. Yeah. And so um, we always add salt when things are fresh, but we're going to add some bacon. Right. That's going to bring some saltiness to them. Yeah. So you want me to just start go, laying let's go it on for here? It. Let's this go is a very it. easy dish too. Yeah. So literally, uh, you know, if you're if cooking is not your thing, uh -huh. but you want to create a really lovely appetizer, yeah. then this is the one for you, because we're putting uncooked, just 
you know, chopped bacon on it. Uh -huh. We're gonna add a little bit of this fresh thyme because at no time to cook. No time. We to can't cook. do anything you get, you get without you get there. what we're doing here. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. You've got to add a little bit of fresh thyme. If you have dried, that's fine too. Yeah. Um, just go a little bit lighter on that. A little bit of pepper. Nice. And then. We're gonna add a little bit of brandy. I'm just using it. Yeah, okay, I just, you know, yeah. yeah, we're chefs, right? That's we're what chefs. we do. Chefs can do a that. little bit of that. In your own home, I don't yeah. know what to tell you, but <laughs> here, this is how we do. And then if you just, everybody gets a little hunk of butter. Yeah. Because everything's better with butter. Okay. Well, and we, bacon. Yeah, we talked brandy, about. We did talk and, about the the yeah, bacon and yeah, the cheese, exactly. and we forgot the butter. Well, yeah. so we're just gonna pop these in like say a four hundred degree oven okay. for you know five six minutes until right. the oysters start to curl and the bacon cooks. Just starts to cook through. Exactly. Yeah, we don't want you know hard oysters. Yeah. And then we'll throw a little bit of parm on top. Okay. Give them another and, and you know twenty seconds and they're done. Finish it off. Yeah. Do you ever do any kind of variations on this? Do you play with this at all? All the time. Sometimes if we're feeling really fancy, instead of bacon, we'll do yeah. prosciutto oh, on it. Or yeah. a little pecorino romano is lovely. Yes. Or you can vary the herbs. But you don't want anything too and too overpowering. Right. You want that oyster to sing, yeah, right? You, yeah, you do. Yeah. You want to get that flavor. So so that's very cool. So we'll we'll just put that in. Okay. Maybe you can just drop that you in got over it. there. That's lovely. Just want me to put it in the oven? Okay. okay. Great. And then do you have, let me get you a thing here. The magic of television. The magic yes. of the television. We happen to have. Here, I'll move this out of the way. We can put that right there so the world can guys. see. Yep. How yum. Yummy they And then they if look. you wanted to be an extra pretty, you could throw a little more of the, put some of the thyme on it. you know, fresh thyme because green makes yeah. everything prettier or parsley if you don't have it. Exactly. And um, yeah. Yeah, that's nice. Was one of the things that we often do when we're baking oysters, whether you're doing a Rockefeller or, or something like this, usually put a bed of either rock salt down yeah. or some coarse, kosher salt. Exactly. So that the oysters have a little bed to sit yeah. in and they don't tip right, over. Right, right, because you won't, don't want all those lovely juices that you've just created to sort yeah. of, you know, slide off of the, yeah, off to, of the to, oyster. And you know what I was thinking about with this, you know, because we're getting into the holiday season and obviously around Thanksgiving or Christmas when you have a lot of people coming over. I have a lot of friends that actually shuck oysters the whole yep. night for people. Ooh, that, those are good friends. And, or they hire somebody yeah. to shuck oysters yeah. the whole night yeah, right. for, for people. Right. And, um, you know, there's always a line. And this could be really good, too, because you could make sheet pans ahead. Absolutely. Of lots and lots of them and just put one in after another. Exactly. And I think people would eat these kind of like peanuts. Um, yeah, they're they, kind of addictive. Yeah, yeah. They, they would go. But you know, you make a good point. So if you don't have a good friend who yeah. is there to shock oysters, we have done this too, where you get oysters. You like, uh, we have a great local source or a waterman yeah. and you get the shells, run them through your dishwasher. Uh -huh. So they're beautifully sanitized and clean. And the next time, buy a quart of oysters and then you can plop the oysters <laughs> in. <laughs> Very nice and idea. do the same preparation. That, that's yeah. a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. Now, people really come around with oysters. They get really excited yep. about it. Yeah. Um, one, one year I went um, to a holiday party with a bunch of people. I knew some of them, but I didn't know very many people. Sure. So I brought a huge tub of oysters, set up a little um, table in the back, yeah. and started chucking. I met everybody. I bet you they, had a lot of friends. They just came at the over end of that and party. You, you met tons of people. <laughs> right. So anyway, that's that's really you know pretty much. That's it. Super that's simple. What it is. Delicious. Yeah. 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 Great appetizer. So this is easy. So we're going to go from easy to not a hundred percent easy, yeah. you know. So we're 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 gonna <laughs> let's let's make let's clear this up, okay. and we're going to go on for a new Sounds one. Sounds good. Okay. Let's do it. Well, Gwen, you know, again, we are tasked with many oyster recipes this evening. It's a tough correct? job. Tough we're, job. We're up for it, though. I feel it. But what I was thinking, you know, we're very close to the holiday season. Yep. And every year. I get all kinds of calls. Well, what should I do with this? Which I, I wanted to do a, a Thanksgiving uh, 911 number <laughs> that they can call. It's like, ah, John, what do I do? Right. Um, but one of the questions is always about stuffing or dressing. Yes. Right? All the time. They always the want to know about the stuffing or the dressing. And I do too. And 
I think it's always been confusing. What is a stuffing and what is a dressing? Right, right. Stuffing, literally, I think it just gets stuffed in the bird, yeah, right? I mean, yeah. dressing is, it's going to be prepared outside of the it bird. It can be outside which is of the bird. safer, yeah. tastier, I think. I, mean, I know that's, I hope I'm not causing a big ruckus yeah. here because there are lovers and haters on both sides. <laughs> exactly. But I like the dressing. Yes. Yeah, which yeah. is what we're going to make today. That's what we're right? going to do. Yeah. So um, we're going to make, obviously, an oyster um, dressing and cornbread. Yeah. Now I've done this quite a number of different ways, different variations. Sometimes I use like brioche bread yep. that I've cut and cubed and let go stale a little bit and toast it mm -hmm. and make a, you know, a stuffing dressing with that. Yeah. But one of the really traditional ways around our area, our neck of the woods, as it were, is a oyster cornbread. Cornbread. Stuffing. Yeah, isn't that cute? It's adorable. A little, little baby cornbread. This is from your first cookbook, it right? Is. Which it I is. adore that book. So, yeah, that's one that I used for a long time. I started using that out in California in my Chesapeake restaurant out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Little taste of the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's called uh, the Two O'Clock Club Cornbread. Two O'Clock Club? Yeah. Uh huh. There uh -huh. must be a story there. There is. There is. <laughs> There was an exotic dancer down there that I got the um, got got the recipe from. Her grandmother's cornbread recipe. Trixie, Trixie Shine. <laughs> God love her. Okay. <laughs> we'll talk more about that later. We're, we're gonna go into that later. <laughs> so anyway, we have a lot of butter. Yes. A lot of butter. Loving it. And we're just gonna start our sautéing process. We yep. might do onions. All the, grab all the a traditional cel celery there. Yeah. Grab some of that the traditional here. Thanksgiving uh, and yumminess. Then, then we'll put some little bit of um, carrots in there. Okay. They're also beautifully diced. Absolutely. That's the way we want to do it, right? right? Cooks evenly. Uh huh. So let's get this get this thing cooking here. So basically, really all we have to do first is sort of sweating the onions yep. and getting things just softened a little bit. You don't right. want them to go to mush. I, at least I don't. I like Agreed. it to have yeah. a little bit of integrity and crunch yeah. um, in there as we're doing it. It's that sweet spot between soft, yes. too soft and too hard, right? Yeah. Because yeah. they're going to spend a ton, some time in the oven. Exactly. Too, so you don't want to overcook them. So we're going to be, you know, essentially... Um, flavoring it with a couple of different components okay. you know all the vegetables yep a little bit of bacon again with the bacon yeah yes. with the bacon we're going with the bacon again excited once again and one of the reasons you know when you were talking about the idea of dressing and and making it on the side or separate yep. i have so many family members who really do not like oysters yeah there's just some of them don't like oysters so i like to make multiple <laughs> dressing stuffings right. so that when I'm putting that on the table, yep. there's something for everybody. Exactly, exactly. My mom's a, a sausage oh, uh, yeah. dressing a connoisseur. She makes a killer Thanksgiving oh, sausage. Yeah. Oh, I, 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 I yeah. like that very, very much. Do you ever put any fruit, nuts? Uh, what else do you put in it? No, in your... she doesn't. Um, but, you know, she's gotten to the point now where she bakes them in the little muffin tin so that everybody gets that crunchiness yeah. on the outside. Oh, I appreciate that. That's very, yeah. that's yeah. really smart. Yeah. That's really, really smart. Okay. Can you smell it? I can. I can smell, smell it Smell-o-vision. Now. Smells so okay, good. Okay, we got to get Mary. Mary? Mary? Look at this. <laughs> I miss Mary so much. I'm so She's with sad. Us every, She's not here. Every show. <laughs> She'll be back. Don't worry. She's watching us. Okay. There we go. Now I'm going to just take some of the bacon and it's pretty much already chopped, crum crumbled. Yeah. Now, if you hadn't or didn't have it already cooked, you could have started with that, right? You I could. suppose and cook yeah. that down yeah. and then. Yeah. And then you kind of get that combination yeah. of butter and, and bacon, bacon fat. fat. Yeah. Yes. For that really healthy, healthy For Thanksgiving. For that healthy Thanksgiving. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Make it extra special. <laughs> All right, lovely. All right. So I was reading about oysters today. Did you know that an oyster can filter 50 gallons of water an hour? 
Is that astronomical? That's insane. Is that、huh? really insane, right? That is. It's the equivalent of you in the shower for ten minutes, apparently. Fifty gallons. And people don't always realize how important they oysters are. are to the health of the bay. That's exactly right. Back a hundred, hundred fifty years ago. The number of oysters in the bay could filter the entire bay within two days. That's amazing. The entire bay. Yeah, yeah.、It、takes、actually, a little longer now. A lot. A lot. A lot longer. I was actually just reading today that、um, three new oyster restoration projects have just been completed in Southern Maryland. So. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's great news that for、is. the oysters. Yeah, it's and important. The bay. I mean, it's it's a great culinary tradition, but、yeah. it's also important to the health. Of the bay, exactly. It really is. All right, so we have some beautiful shucked oysters. Yeah, we have some shuck selects right now, and、uh, we're gonna put those in right there. And so, if you kind of saw, there was a little bit of liquor on the、mm-hmm. bottom there. That's the oyster <laughs> liquor. It's, it's sort of like an amazingly strong stock flavoring、yes. component. You want that? Yeah. So we're not going to have to cook these very much at all.、We're、just going to put a little bit in here, start stirring them around because we we don't want to overcook the oysters. Right, but you like you said, you're, you're adding them at the end because you do want a little bit of 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 cook on them because a raw oyster again they'll bake, but they'll bake, yeah, but it'll really change the texture by yeah, it would cooking so, them a little. So you do want to get a few minutes in here just until they start to、yeah. cook a little tiny bit, but it does give. That oyster liquor gives it such an amazing flavor,、yes. and it sort of goes throughout、mm-hmm. everything. So you better like oysters for this recipe. All right. So how about a little bit of sherry? All right. Come on, come <laughs> on. Do we have a a rat? Well, it says、it's、just glug glug glug. It says you know. a, it says a half a cup, but that, we're going to go like that. That's、uh, perfectly that feels, measured. That feels perfectly it, measured. It? Yeah. Yes. I mean, it's amazing, like. You know, my grandmother, probably your grandmother. It was so intuitive. Cooking、yes. was intuitive because they did it every single day. Exactly. And you could just feel how much you needed to、yes. put in. You know. Well, it's funny when、um, my grandmother, when I was trying to learn some of her my favorite recipes of hers. Yeah. You know, and I said, well, how much? You know, as a chef, you're like, how much is in it?、And、she's like, I don't know, honey. You just <laughs> you just do it. And so I would actually have her. Put it in my hand、right. before she put it in the dish, so I could get a sense of, of how much it's so much like. And did you did measure、there. any of it? Not that after、point? that,、no. but but and I got a good you know yeah, yeah. idea.、So. Yeah, I mean you do. You、yeah. can just get you know.、Yeah. Feel. But I mean recipes are very important while you get to know the dish. Right. Then you can kind of play with it, but that's really what you need. Yeah, we always say they're guidelines. You know, they're not the Ten yeah. Commandments yeah. chiseled into stone. Use what you like. Use what you have. And adjust the flavors the way you like it. I think that's pretty. It's beautiful. We could just eat that. We could, Hell but I mean, <laughs> so anyway, we have this cornbread. Yeah. So I made the cornbread a little bit earlier and let it get. You want to have some? Yeah. Here, have some. Let's pull、I、it. Love Let's、this. pull it apart. So we'll just take it and crumble it, really.、Yeah. And I, I generally do it like about a day ahead. So it gets a little stale. And you can, yeah, and you can use whatever your favorite cornbread recipe is.、Yeah. You know, you don't need to use the two o'clock club version. <laughs> you can use whatever you like.、Um, I mean, you can even get a store bought、um, cornbread. Just let it cut if you're not into it, or if your nerves are bad and you have to really get you, you gotta you gotta move this along. You could do that. All right, here we go. Ooh, oh my goodness! This is this. beautiful, John. Look at this! Oh、yeah. my God! I'm loving this. Beautiful.、Ooh. All right, I'll give this a stir. All right, so you stir that on up. I'm gonna get that. That's looking good, huh? Yeah. And it smells good. It really does. So the idea with this, you know, I was, you know, kind of joking around about the the ratios.、Um, <laughs> there was about a half a cup of that liquid plus the liquid from the oysters. Right. And so the idea is we want to get this that it's not too wet, but it is moist,、yep. so that as it as it bakes,、um, if for some reason you felt that this was a little too moist, all you have to do. Take a little, a little bit more. Oh, good thinking. Yeah. Cornbread. It's better to go with a little less to start. Right. You can always add some. Yeah. More. You always can, can add、yep. some more. You go right. Okay. Go right ahead. Keep on going. 
And then we're going to put it in your prepared dish, right? We will. We okay. will. So you could put this in a number of different things, like a square um, Pyrex right. if you want it. I, I kind of like doing it as a loaf. And then you can kind of slice, slice down. Yeah. So there we go. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh my goodness. Yumminess. That's good enough to eat, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Better be, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> Oops, I almost got it in the That is perfect. Hand That's there. The, it fits right in there. It fits right in that Look thing. Look at that. So basically what I do would do at this point is maybe put a little bit of aluminum foil over okay. there, put it into an oven about 350. Yep. And it could go for about 30, 35 minutes just okay. till it's heated yeah. nice and through. Right. And then start serving. Yeah. Do you then, take the lid off? Do you take the foil off at the right, end just right to kind of get yeah. and then you can get it a little brown Crunchy. on the top. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, and we then, pop it in the oven? And yeah, we can pop okay. that in the oven and there we go. So I think that we did a pretty good job you with that. crushed yeah. it. Good yep. job. So there you go. Another <laughs> oyster recipe. Right? And you're, you're getting ready for the holidays. Yeah. So let's go back just a little bit. We were coming up with a bunch of recipes that we had and yep. that we liked. But we had a pretty important job we, just a little while ago, did. didn't we? It, it is a difficult job, but I, you know we we get to judge the National Oyster Cook-Off uh -huh. every yeah. year. So three categories, yes. appetizers, soups and stews, and main dishes. Yep. Three entries in each. Yep. So we were pretty full by the end, but we were kind of you know bowled over by one particular soup. Well, why don't we take a look okay. and... We, this way we can take you down the Oyster yeah. Festival and you can see exactly how we judged. All right, Gwen, are you ready to I'm, judge? I am so ready. I look forward to this all year long. <laughs> Me too. How about you, right? Me too. Yes. You know, judging the U.S. Oyster Festival cook-off is like unbelievable. It is. It is so much fun. And I just am amazed at the variety of ways that people come up with to cook oysters. <laughs> Soups and stews, first of all. Then yep. we have the main course. And then there's the appetizer, appetizer. as well. I, I missed the appetizer. Yeah. You got the whole thing. Yeah. All right, well, I'm ready. Let's get going. Let's and, eat. You uh, ready? You hungry? Yeah, I got to settle my stomach before we hit those oysters tomorrow. Let's do it. Okay. <laughs> Was fun, right? I had a good time. Me too. I'm uh, full. I'm, that. Full. I'm full. It's hard, you know. Those people spend so much time and energy and effort, you know, to come down for that cook off, and you they know, do. And they, I mean, just think of the recipe. To, you know, to develop a recipe and yeah. then refine it, yeah. And then they spend, yeah, come from far away as the winner of this it, dish it, did exactly from Pennsylvania. See, every year they do a cookbook, a yeah. little cookbook from the cook off. And um, this year, uh, the winner, at least for this uh, soup the soup food. thing, yep. um, was Lisa Keys, and she's from Pennsylvania. Yeah. And it was a beautiful, creamy Maryland oyster potato leek soup with bacon and chives. It was gorgeous. It was extra silky in its consistency. She did a fabulous job with that. Yeah. And the flavor was amazing. And, and I think it was because she did some classic techniques she did um on making the soup she had to have she really did yeah. i mean because it was so you know the Precise. nuance and and the texture everything was just absolutely beautiful yeah it was just elegant yeah that's... and so we we chose it for that category as the winner but also as the overall presentation yes winner it was simple but beautiful it really was it really was all right so we're going back to some of our basics that you've seen us working with so far this evening yep Butter. 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 We have the butter. So if you're going to do a potato leek soup, that is one of the crux right. of, of the thing. So we have um, onions, we have leeks, we have the whole enchilada. Yep. So I'm sure most of you have seen a leek. Uh, one of the things that Gwen and I wanted to talk to you about a little bit real quickly. Gwen, you can throw those okay. in if you want. Then we'll talk to them about the leeks. Yeah. Leeks, I think, scare people a little bit. They do. You know, they're big. They're kind of woody a little bit. They can be. Yeah. And and I think people are a little bit, you know, put off by them sometimes. 
Also, and you can see this right here, there's kind of like sand sand and dirt and, dirt and mud yep. kind of stuff yeah that's sort of how the leeks grow um but they're absolutely wonderful so what you want to do is when you take the leeks apart you want to soak them i mean I, I cut them into big pieces and then i put them in cold water right. let them sit and any of the sand just settles to the bottom. Exactly. Because we're going for a very elegant soup presentation. Yeah. And the last thing you want in this gorgeous soup is to have, you know, crunchy bits of a, a little <laughs> sand. Grit, a little right? grit would not go so well. <laughs> so, all right, let's get, uh, let's get cooking here. All right, I'm going to turn this up. All right, so we have leeks and then we have onions. So, as you can tell, this is going to be kind of an oniony sort of soup we're going to have here yeah. today. And leeks, if people aren't familiar with them, are a very mild, almost onion yes. flavor. Yeah, it is. It is in that definitely in that flavor. Yeah. But there's so many things that you can do with them. Obviously, you can put them in a soup, but you can braise them, yep. which is really nice. Yep. Um, you know, I've taken them after I've washed them real good, put them together, and put prosciutto around oh, them. Yum. Sear it off. A little chicken sock, but yeah. And, oh my God, so <laughs> good. So there's a lot to do you know, with, with leeks. So again, you're just trying to sweat these down. Yes. Get them nice and translucent. Right. That's all. That's kind of really all we want to do here. There's a theme here today, John. Are you seeing there's a lot of butter? There's a lot of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> there is. We just can't help ourselves, can we? So we're going to let this go down here like so. But generally, I always think this is like a potpourri whenever you have butter and an onion or better bunion uh, um, on the onion the bacon, bacon yes and the thing is right. like oh my god it makes the whole kitchen smell so good yes it if you really want people does. to think you're really doing something yes just yes. get that going on the stove yeah they say oh my god they're cooking <laughs> they're really cooking over there all right good so we have that in there we're going to let that sweat you know just for a couple of minutes and then we can put a lid on that just for a second get the whole thing all to come together, yep. soften up just a touch. Yeah. Um, generally, when I'm getting the potatoes done, I just use, you know, like a russet mm -hmm. uh, potato. Um, yeah. I want to cut them into chunks about yay big. Right. Um, you don't have to do anything precise with this because we're going to blend it. Puree it. And yep. uh, the whole, whole thing. So, but, you know, if you can get it relatively consistent, they'll cook similar exactly the yeah. whole way through so that's a that's a good way good way to do that and the russets are nice because they're going to cook down and they're really going to break down a red skin potato not yes the, no. the potato you want for something like this for sure for sure for sure for sure okay. now um in this dish the way it was presented to us yes this gorgeous soup yeah and then um the contestant put in four poached oysters correct but we're going to do something and, a little bit different and it could be right? like that it so at the be. end they could just float them in and let them cook yep. a little bit yep but gwen and i are doing a variation on a theme because we can we can because um, you know that's the way she wrote it <laughs> we it's, chefs just can't do it with the way can, the recipe is written it. right we can never do anything quite the way yeah. the people because we thought that. it would be really fun to sort of have a variety of textures. Exactly. So you have this luxurious, silky soup. Yeah. But what if you had a fried oyster crispy, with it, right? Crispy fried yeah. oyster. Yeah. Okay, I'm feeling very good about these onions and leeks right okay. now. So I'm just going to put my hands in this and get these potatoes in here real quick like. And then... We can start seasoning some stuff up okay. as well. Um, we have, I believe, chicken stock. Do we, we not? We do. It's yeah. right here. Maybe we put, yep, yep. put some of the chicken stock in while I put my potato. Okay. Lovely. There we go. Okay. There we go. So I'm just going to put in there a little bit of salt okay. right now. Um, the recipe calls for salt and white pepper. White pepper. So the idea here is this is such an elegant soup mm -hmm. that you don't want the... Often, for most soups, we know we'll put some fresh 
perfectly gra uh, cracked black, black pepper. pepper. Yep. But that isn't what you want on this. You want this to be just like beautiful, yeah. clear. You don't want to see those as much as I adore black pepper. Yeah. You don't really want to see those specks of black in this in this beautiful soup. Exactly. All right. So we get that in there. I think you're going to put a little bit of nutmeg I in there am. as well. And a little bit of this goes a long way it too, does, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And that's something, as always, you can add a little bit more later if you think it needs a little bit more. I always try to air with a less of everything, whether it's the salt, Agreed. whether it's any of the seasonings, because yep. you can always add a little bit more later. Yeah, you don't want this to taste like nutmeg. No. You want it to be sort of in the background going, there's something interesting happening there. What is it? What is that? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do this, and I'm gonna let that go. So, all right, so we're doing soup. We're mm -hmm. doing a stew. You know, we've been doing soup stews. Yep. What are some of the other things that you all do down at No Time to Cook? Oh, what kind wow. of classes do you have? We have a we have a wide variety of classes. So pasta, you saw that yeah. earlier, is our most popular class by far. Uh -huh. People can't wait to get their hands in pasta. We do fresh sushi, Spanish tapas. Um, yeah, we do sourdough bread. We have a whole baking series. Uh, we also do culinary tours. We're actually yeah. heading to Oktoberfest in Munich really? next September. Oh my God. Yeah, we'll be in uh, Germany, Austria, Switzerland for nine days. So if you want to come with us, check out our website. Yeah. And then you and I are talking about maybe doing a little thing. Teaming we might, up. We might take a little trip ourselves yeah. and yep, yep. you can come along. Yeah. So like people go to the website, it's no time. No time. So time. Now we want you to go to the culinary time. <laughs> T-H-Y-M-E. Exactly. No time to cook. It's a great, yeah. it's a great um, site. It it's really a is. Thank you. And I'm really happy. Like I signed up for your newsletter yeah. and, and get one once a week. And yeah. it's got all kinds of things and recipes. So I love it. Yeah, we do mixology. We uh, classes. We do bourbon pairings, wine tastings. Whoa. It's a good time. It is a good time. And it's also absolutely lovely. And then you can stay with us too. We have an Airbnb on our, our chef's loft. Is the third right. floor overlooking Solomon's Harbor. So uh, yeah, it's uh, when you come to you, we give you a discount on oh. your classes. Nice. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. So what we're gonna do? We're gonna let this um, simmer and cook. Okay. It needs to cook for about twenty minutes until the potatoes actually yep. get soft enough that we can puree them. And there we go. So All right. Well, we'll we'll just let this sit. I love it. All right, it's time for garnish. Yes. We are going to garnish this soup the way we want. Best garnish ever. Fried oysters. <laughs> yes, sir. So fried oysters are one of my favorite things. And having a restaurant, people go crazy for them all the time. And they keep saying, how do you do that? It's so simple. So we're going to show you right now how to do it. Easy peasy. All right, we have right here flour. Okay, just about all a, purpose, a, right? All purpose, about a, about a cup. Okay, and then right there you have some lovely cornmeal, beautiful, and then we're just going to mix that around. So you have a half and half ratio. Uh, if you need to do more, you need to do less. All you need is a half and half ratio. Okay, now we're going to put some salt in there. It takes about for that. Amount, about a tablespoon of salt, okay. right? And then we're going to have to have enticed with spice kind of a thing. Okay. Of Old Bay. Now, people use Old Bay for everything around here. Crabs, chicken, anything. Um, Bloody Marys, you add it into yeah. that too. So we, Maryland we're gonna, thing. So this is going to take about a tablespoon of that as well. Of Expertly the Old Bay. measured. Yes, and, and, and I heard that... Now there are some plastic cans of Old Bay, and then there used to be tins. What are you thinking? It sounds the same, but this looks like a tin. It looks like a tin. I don't know. But anyway, you're going to have to judge for yourself. Get out there it's and pepper. figure out. Pepper, some freshly ground pepper there. That this is going to be good and flavorful. It is. It has a lot of flavor. Um, and again, it's just pretty darn simple. All right, so we have some vegetable oil in a frying pan mm -hmm. here. It's getting kind of hot. Let me just grab over here, get myself a little water, and I'll just give... That's, That's how you know. It's starting to sound like a, a, a frying kind yes. of uh, thing. All right, we'll get those things out of the way. Okay. And now we are going to... Now you could say coat the oysters, 
But in our vernacular, we say dredge, dredge the them, oysters. Which makes yes. sense when you're talking about oysters. Oysters, right? right? Yeah. Uh huh. We're going to dredge right. our oysters. You may do multiple. In our yeah, we put a few of those in okay. there. We're going to leave the liquor in the in the other bowl. So I when, love there, this. There's dredge. a number of different ways to do this. You okay. could do it right in an egg wash first. Yep. And then in flour, seasoned flour. Right. Correct. Yes. So I ha the egg wash usually is there to help coat, right? Yeah. I feel like my egg wash is this oyster liquor. I love it. And I, I, I don't need much of anything else. So I just take it and toss them quite a number of times around, like so. Yeah, this is brilliant because I waste a lot of time going through seasoned flour, yes. egg wash, and then whatever the, yeah. the crusty, you know, crunchy bit is. So I cannot wait to try these. Yeah. So so really, and I always take and kind of shake off the excess. Sure. I don't want a lot of crust stuff on there. Yep. Look at that. Okay, come okay. on, let's go. Let the oyster speak for let's, itself, let's, right? Yeah, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a grand time. And we were waiting for that oil to get good and hot. Uh huh. And I think we're just about I there. Think don't we're you? there. <laughs> Because if it's not hot enough, yeah. then those oysters absorb all that oil and right. it, it's not crunchy and yummy. Ooh. Yeah, careful. That's the hot stuff. <laughs> and if you're nervous about putting your hands that close to hot oil, you could always use tongs. You right? could. Yeah. I mean, sensible yeah. people probably would. <laughs> Look at this. Beautiful. Look at that. <gasps> Gorgeous. I mean, really. And so easy. I think you changed my life, John. And we're just looking for them to get golden brown. Yep. And then we're going to write on the, the and, paper towel. And that really is all there is to it. So you can keep, um, you know, cooking these, put them on, and then we're going to put them in the oven for just a second to... Right, so you don't have to do them right at the last minute when right. you're serving them. But, um, yeah, pop, just get them in that nice hot oven. Don't cover them. No. Otherwise, they'll, they'll steam, and then it'll take away all that yummy crunchiness. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Beautiful. Shut this off here before I burn the house down. <laughs> Call the fire department. Which are Comes they, for dinner. Which are they known to do, you know? <laughs> We've all done it. Uh -huh. There we go. So there we go. Yeah. So they were very simple, what we call single fried oysters. All right, so I'm going to get rid of this here and get us a little bit there. So maybe, V, can you grab that for us and get that out of the shot? Thank you. Be real careful with that, like. Okay. All right, so we're going to wash this up real quick, and then we can finish this soup. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. Get everything off. And we're going to quickly finish the soup. Bring that over here. Ooh. And then I think we have this all ready to go. We are going to do a little immersion blender magic here. Best tool in the kitchen after in your chef's knife, kitchen. right? It is really important. Because without this, you'd have to put it in a blender, cool it down a little bit so yep. it doesn't explode, but not with this guy. You could just puree the entire thing in this one pot. Same pot. We one can. pot cooking. One pot cooking. Here we go. <laughs> I love one pot cooking. Me too. Because it's easier cleanup, I isn't it? I tell you what. Love the cooking, hate the cleanup part. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. So here we go. Look at that. You just have to be careful to make sure it stays in the pot. <laughs> right. Yeah, it kind of gets gets away from you now and then. And then I think we have a nice little bowl. We do. Want me to grab them? Yeah, you want to grab that. Oh, yep. And we have a strainer. And I think this is the secret of this particular soup, is yes. it not? And what you liked so much about it during the cooking competition. Yeah, was the texture. Was the texture right. of the soup. Because... Like you could stop after, at this point after right. you puree it, but you if you could. want to take it to that next elegant level, uh -huh. you need to, to to strain it. And that's exactly what they did with yeah. that. And that is kind of more the classic French technique yep. at that point. To make it as challenging as you possibly. That's right. We like to make it challenging. <laughs> 
Anybody can do easy. Exactly. Right. Oh, yeah. All right. So I'm going to take that over there, get that out of the way. And we're going to just take our nice roasty, toasty hot soup. Yep. So you move back. Okay. I don't want to hurt anybody here. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Look at that. And now we can just take, I guess, and push through here. Yep. Let me shut this off here. Is it coming through? Yep. Oh, it's look coming at that. through. Gorgeous. And then you're yeah. not going to throw these bits away on no, the top, no, right? No, 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 no. Absolutely <laughs> not. So you're just going to keep pushing, pushing, pushing the whole thing through. And then I'll show you what happens after you've done that, which is very cool. All right, let's get our finished one here. And you're pushing, pushing, pushing. It's so this, time. Gives you, this gives you your exercise yeah, of pushing, right? pushing, pushing. And we're going to put that right there. You know, if you Thank didn't have you. A, an immersion blender, you could use a food mill you could. too, you, right? If you, you wanted to go kind of old school with you it. You could. And you could actually, yeah. if you really wanted to, you could put in um, like a food processor. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sometimes I feel like when you do that, that the potatoes get a little too starchy. Agreed. And they kind of freak out on you. Yeah. Okay. So basically what we're doing as we push this through, then you're going to add just a little bit of half and half to that. Heavy right? cream would be nice too. Heavy don't you cream think? Cream is too. even more delicious. And that's pretty much what we have right there. Yeah. So let me grab some bowls. Move our oysters here like so. And I do believe I have a ladle here. So we're just going to take and put some of our Ooh. soup in there. Yum. And throw some bacon in there. We're going to add a little bit more to the top, like so. And then a little bacon, like we like. We do like that bacon. We love bacon. Put a little bit more bacon it's in there. In every... And then I think you have, have some little... herbs de Provence. Herbs de Provence. Yeah, yeah, from Max Degrees over at the 32nd Street ah. Farmer's Market. They do lovely spice blends. So we're going to do some classic French herbs de Provence. Love it. But if you didn't have them, uh, chives. Chives be are beautiful. Fabulous on top chives of this. work very, very nicely. Yeah. So there we go. We have our lovely soup and then shall we yes all right we'll get let's garnish this we'll one garnish ba, ba, ba. Three. <laughs> and then we're gonna go one two three three beautiful oh, since we have one we'll throw that one Sorry. in there too <laughs> so there you go you have an absolutely beautiful classic french technique it really is with all the wonderful flavors with the oyster and the oyster liquor. Yes. And then you have these crispy oysters that you can kind of dip yeah. into it while you're eating the soup. Yeah, because I think that combination of textures really is exciting for the palate, right? It's going it, to it's it's be delicious. It, it really is. Yeah. So I, I think we've done real good with Let's that. Let's eat it. Yeah, we will. <laughs> okay. okay. One th thing we could do, you know, before we finish up with our hooch section. <laughs> It was so much fun down that oyster festival. There's so much going on. You yeah. have the king and queen of the oyster festival. Right? You have the shucking competitions. You have, mm -hmm. I mean, people come from everywhere they for really this thing. They really do. So that was so much fun. So why don't we take a look at that and so everybody can see where we were and what we did. Let's do it. Mike, I love it. We're right here where the oyster competition happens yep. at the cook-off, the big cook-off. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but it's also a, a massive operation and it's an oyster festival. Tell me a little bit about the history of the oyster festival. How did um, it happen? You know, this tradition of oysters that goes back that far that we wanted to highlight the oyster. And we also had the watermen looking for a thing to do because mm -hmm. they, you know, they want to keep the oyster 
you know, they want to keep it going. So they, they, they're here with fried oysters. Yeah. Uh, the Waterman's Association does fried oysters. The, the Optimist Clubs does shuck the uh, raw oysters. It really is a community event. Well, we have been fascinated by it, and I love the fact that all this goes back. What you do raise goes back to the community. Absolutely. Right here, Absolutely. you're supporting our local farmers, yes. our agricultural community, yes. our oystermen. My grandfather was an oysterman Absolutely. in Virginia. Yep. We've been walking around, we've been talking to folks and visiting, and just incredible. you ready to finish this up yes okay well we usually try to have something that's locally crafted yep. um, to finish off the show sometimes it's artisan people who do kombucha or you know all, all kinds of things and we usually like to do a drink you know a cocktail because as mary here's mary mary Hi, we're mary. making this for you um <laughs> Our nerves are shot by the end of this show. <laughs> I mean, have you seen all the stuff we're going? We had things on fire. We've there been was, busy. There was stuff. Mm -hmm. So anyway, we're going to do a little cocktail. Okay. Okay. I'm in. And and so this is actually a tequila, and it's Los Hermanos tequila, and um, Donna Henson and his brother William. Now they are the city's first black and veteran-owned tequila crafters. I love it. Yeah. I love and, it. And so. They do just an amazing job, and I, do you like tequila? I do. I I got a, I got a whiff of this earlier, <laughs> and this is really a first-rate tequila. Yeah. You can sometimes you can just tell by the whole thing. All right, so we call this a smoky apple cider margarita. So again, we're in the holidays, uh, right around you know the fall, mm -hmm. and we have the lovely apple ciders from yeah. everywhere around here. So all right. We have taken some beautiful cinnamon and sugar. Yep. And then I'm going to take just a little bit. You could use flaky sea salt, or I'm going to use a little bit of a Celtic sea salt, because you know I'm an Irish kind I of guy, know. Am, for God's sake. And so we're just going to take and mix all that up. So you have cinnamon, sugar, a little bit of saltiness, Ooh, sweet and right? Salty at the same time. Yum. And then we're going to rim the cup. Yeah, we are. So you had a brilliant idea. Because <laughs> it's going to have maple syrup in it. Right. Just dip it. Yeah, there. we need something that to Wait. make that loveliness stick to the glass. Ooh, look at that. Oh, pretty. Look at that. Okay, we have one. One. And then we have Oops, two. two. Going to dip that in there. So that's one for you. <laughs> this is going to be one for me. And then we're going to make one for Mary. Mary. Uh huh. We, we're not letting, me, letting you out. <laughs> We're going to send this over via the television waves. <laughs> okay, there we go. We have our three rim that. Beautiful. Okay, so now we're going to take our tequila and we're going to put it in. So it takes about two ounces per, per drink. drink. So there we have one drink. There we have two drinks. There we have one for Mary <laughs> and one for the pot. Exactly. Okay, there we go. <laughs> Lovely. And then we're going to have some orange liqueur, and we're going to Ooh, use Cointreau. the Cointreau, okay? So this will be enough for two, okay. if I fill this one here, and then just about a half of that again to get our orange flavor in there. Yum. And then I'm going to take some apple cider and put that in there as well, like so. And then we're going to put a little bit of lime juice in. Mm. Ooh, no, no. For squeeze. We could even squeeze some of our own there. Yeah. Like that. And to finish it off, we just need a little tiny bit of maple syrup. And we were saying if you had a smoky maple syrup, that yeah, would be fabulous. That would be very cool. Or right. if you don't. Come on here. I'm going to do this over the sink. <laughs> Because this is going to be a little scary. I'm standing back. It usually is when I do these things. <laughs> All right, we're shaking it up. Here we go. I'm coming back. Okay. I'm coming back. We're shaking this thing up here. Oh, Lord. And you put ice cubes in there, so it's good and yeah, cold. Yeah, there's ice cubes in here. We're shaking it up, getting nicey, nice cold. All right, now we have to do 
get the thing off of here. Yep. Come on. Ah, oh, lovely. Ooh. Look at that. Yep. Beautiful, yep. brothy. We're going to take our little strainer here as like so. And we're just going to take and pour like one and like a two and then like a three like that there. How do you like that, huh? Beautiful. How do you like them apples? Gorgeous. Literally. Gorgeous. Apples. Okay. And then we have some garnish, we do we do. not? We do. We have some How beautiful gonna... local apples. We're going to garnish that with some yeah. of those. Okay. Should we put them right in the yeah, floaters there? Float those in there. Yeah. And then we have some rosemary sprigs. Lovely. Give you all kinds of different fragrances going on there. And then and then we actually have some of cinnamon that. Cinnamon sticks. So you want smoky? <laughs> you want smoky? Oh, we're giving you Come smoky. Come on, Gwen. Okay, let's do we're this. We're going to give you smoky. Ready? Oh, Lord. Okay. So we just take a little bit of the cinnamon stick. Get that burning up a little bit there. Mm, smells good. You can good. actually smell yeah. that. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to put... Cinnamon stick in for a little smoky there. That's one. And another one in for there. And I think for it. we have it. Burns my fingers. Okay. <laughs> All right. All right. You ready to try this? Mm, Ooh, smells good, doesn't it? It does. All right. Cheers. Cheers. And cheers to Mary. We missed you this <laughs> evening. We really did. And we want you all to... Give this a whirl. And yes. Check out our kind of locavore tequila. Let's try it. Ooh. Oh, yeah. That is good. Delish. That is absolutely <laughs> delicious. It is. So, as usual, I have, always have to do my disclaimer right now. I'm getting ready to say goodbye, but I do not want you to unplug your computers or anything like right, that. Right, it's time for Q&A. Yeah, because mm -hmm. we're going to have a great Q&A. And actually, we're hoping that Mary will be able to pull herself out of the bed to come <laughs> so she can talk to you about while we were down there. First of all, Gwen, thank you oh so much. Oh my gosh, thanks thank for having so me. Thank you so much for coming up and hanging out with us and for hosting us while we were down there. It really was one of the nicest experiences <laughs> I've ever had down oh, the Oyster Festival. Sweet. So thank you so much. Thank you. And of course, there's many other people to, to thank. We have to thank Harford County Public Library, the whole team up there to make everything come to, together. And um, the, our common table production team with Louie and the whole <laughs> gang making this look good or trying to make us look good. You know, it's not always easy, is it? And um, so and, and everybody who also helped. Uh, we had a lot of help down at the Oyster Festival we as well. Who they were great. They uh, got us hotel rooms. They showed us around. Uh, they rolled out the red carpet. So we want to thank everyone there too. We also, as always, like to thank um, the Maryland's Best Program and Maryland's Best Seafood because Maryland does have some of the best seafood in the entire world. It really, really does. Um, so yeah, so we have a we, we have a pretty cool cool place, you, don't we? We absolutely do. We, yes. re we really do. <laughs> and also make sure that you join us uh, next month in December because we're going to have sweet treats Ooh. from around the world. We have some really cool people that are going to be with us, um, local chefs, but both bringing different kinds yeah. of takes you, uh, on it. chocolate and um, classic French. Sounds or, great for yeah. gifts and entertaining. And that's exactly right? what we're going to do. Yeah. So once again, thank all of you. And we, we, we always it, Thank you also for just inviting us into your home <laughs> and to hang out with us. And if you ever want to help us get out there a little bit more, please tell all your friends, your family, everyone you know about Chesapeake Farm and Bay to Table and, and um, tell them to sign up to come and watch and, and hang out with us. And when after you do that on the World Wide Web, get over to No Time to Cook <laughs> and check out Gwen and take a little trip down to Solomon's Island. Okay, so we're going to have Q&A in just a minute. But until then, good night. Good Thank night. you very much. <laughs>